We're on the third day here and it's time to have fresh baked bread on the table today. So this is what we got this morning. This really turned into 48 hours since I started. Um, and this is what it looks like after that much time of uh, fermentation. It smells really nice. I love that smell. Um, so what we're gonna do next is, by the way, making bread doesn't have to take that long. Uh, you don't have to start three days in advance to have fresh bread on the table. If you, I find really pinched with time, I can start bread in the morning and have a fresh, freshly baked bread on the table by lunchtime. Uh, about three hours, I think, is the about minimum time that you need to get the bread down from uh, starting with fresh dry ingredients to freshly baked bread on a table. And it's good bread. Okay. I like to use a sifter to uniformly dust flour over the dough on a surface where I'm going to be working with the dough. By the way, this is not a sifter, but I can't think of it. I'm just gonna make a rectangle kind of shape doesn't have to be that's fine. So I'm just gonna let this sit for another 15 minutes. Let it come to the room temperature. Next we're just gonna roll the dough and uh, give it another 15 minutes. Take it or find something that you like. That's it. Just gonna do that and let it rest again. Next, I'm going to divide the dough into a couple of different amounts. I think what I decided I'm gonna use about 400 grams. There's six, 750 here. I'll use 400 to like make a loaf of bread. I'll take 250, make baguette, and then I'll leave 100 to make a couple of these bread rolls. But uh, back home we used to call kifla. I used to buy the original. So and I never, never tried to make kifla, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you. 
six plus a little one oh nine. Then we will try to make a couple, a couple of Strainer to dust some flour over these. It's funny how I couldn't think of a word, and then I got my phone and I was thinking what to Google, and I said, Oh, I'll try Googling a handheld tea strainer. That's exactly what it is it's a strainer. <laughs> Next step, what I do, kind of flatten it in the middle and go like almost half over two thirds, pinch it to close. Sometimes I go third time, this time I won't, just for the sake of the length of the video. And it'll be fine. And this one I'll just leave it as is. I'm not going to try to roll it out as I will with the baguette. Uh, these two guys also, I'm just going to leave them just pitch the sleeve. It's about six inch, so that's good.
I kind of roll up the ends to make them a little bit more pointy. And if I see uneven the distribution of the dough on two ends, then I just kind of put more emphasis on the thicker part. Like so, this seems thicker than that. Just thinning. So, just put more emphasis on the thicker part until they even out. And then I go the entire line. Let's get it to about right. this rest for another 10-15 minutes before I put it to proof. Let's put these on a sheet for the last stage before the oven and that's proofing. What I do and it's my favorite half. And it's, uh, it's my favorite half. I proof it Prove it in a sheet, but I'm gonna bake it in it. I used to do what most other people are doing. Like you have a proofing cloth, and then it's really, it's not not very easy to, to get good at transferring the dough that's been proofed over to the baking sheet. So I came up with this solution do it like this put these in the middle and put this guy to the side paper to do what proofing cloth Paper. So 
slash temperature and moisture because whenever you leave the dough you need to cover the dough so it's not losing moisture let's be safe boiling water putting the hot water on a rack below and my dough above. And it's gonna take about 45 minutes. <laughs> 